2008 was not a good year for sisters Kimberly and Catherine Corp and their New York-based Pilates studio, Pilates on Fifth. From June to October, our top line revenue dropped about 40%. And while they tried to keep a good attitude, 2009 was not much better. We tend to be optimistic people, right. so we're always going to see the glass is half full. But sometimes it actually is half empty. <laughs> but it's 2010, and it's starting to look like, once again, that glass may be starting to fill up. Things are better. Much better. We're not saying that we're, oh, we're out of the woods. But clients are back. After a tough ride through the worst economy since the Great Depression, these women are starting to feel the beginnings of a recovery. Compared to every month so far from 2009, the numbers are definitely up. Some months up more than others, but it's all good. <laughs> Talking to them, you can feel a palpable sense of relief. But you also get the feeling that the recession, though tough, may turn out to have been helpful for the company in the long run. The status quo can be a very comfortable place where you stop looking for new things and looking to the future. You're just like, oh, everything's going well, and you just sort of sit back and enjoy the ride. And then once the ride gets bumpy, you're like, okay, I got, I got to think, I got to do, I got to look around, see what's out there. They started the company in 2000 and catered to a high-end clientele. What they were was successful. What they were not was very diversified. When the economy faltered, that had to change. When the recession hit, we thought, okay, we have to shake things up a bit and make our studio stand up. We added lots of group equipment classes, other types of classes, because we just figured we needed to make a price point that was a little bit lower. They also hadn't been very disciplined about the way they managed their staff. Both of us hate to be the one that has to go tell someone what to do. It's just not in our nature to be like, I need you to do this. Yeah. <laughs> and neither of us likes to do that. And so then we're like, you do it. No, you, yeah. then, we're, then we're three years old again. Because of that, they tended to ignore the bad habits of many of their employees. When things started to get lean, they realized, despite what they felt comfortable doing, they had to take more control. Now the front desk is under strict orders to email us when people are late. And in New York City, where rent is so expensive, they had been letting two rooms in their studio sit empty. Basically, wasted space. We had this space on the main floor that was not monetized. And we're thinking right. we're paying rent on this space and it's going to nothing. It doesn't generate right. a penny. It took the recession to get them to actually do something about this. So rented out those two rooms and it's been Great. wonderful. Today, the sisters are facing different kinds of issues than they were two years ago. Now, instead of shrinking their staff, they're figuring out how to grow it. We're both a little bit gun shy. I yeah. think that's one thing that the recession does to you is that um, we're 99% sure that we need to hire one more person, but it's just that yeah. taking that first step and committing to that um, yeah. weekly salary. This cautious attitude is entirely different than the way they approached spending money to renovate their studio in 2006. We were so confident that we were doing the right thing. Now they both admit they're not quite as fearless as they once were about business. But at the same time, they've developed a new sense that if they survived this, they can survive anything. It gave us the confidence that we can get through the hardest time ever. You learn about people, you learn about yourself and what you have in you as a well of reserve and your, your resilience mm -hmm. and just your ability to roll with the punches and manage things. And so I just, confidence-wise, I'm like, I can do this.